Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at a very simple and pretty cool tool which you can use to create 2D particle effect. And for those who are excited about making sprites and maybe you want to use this for your 2D animations or for your 2D games, then this is also something that you should take a look at. Now this tool is known as BlastFX and it's just one of those tools that I came across while walking around the internet. So for those who like to grab this, there is a demo version that you can get and of course you can choose to get this on Steam as it's available for both Windows, Mac and also Linux. So with that said, we're going to dive directly into the tool and take a look at how it works and a couple of things that you guys need to know. So first things first, you'd notice that you have two different canvases here. The very first canvas is your source and then you have the output. Now within the source is where you get to see more like the preview of what's going to be happening and within the output is where you see the effects of things that you'll be working with and we'll definitely just simply go ahead and talk about that. Now down here you would notice that we have a node system which is pretty legit and I like the fact that that exists there and you'd also see that we have a couple of things that has to do with things that you can do within the node system in terms of snapping, setting these things one to one and then you can also zoom in and also choose to zoom out. Now with that if we look at the left hand side you would notice that we have a couple of emitters, we have emitter properties and this is just where it simply starts making sense because you can add as much emitters as you want so we can go all the way to the emitter property and start making some changes and for those who are asking can you also change the way the emitter looks and all that yes you can so if we go over to the general section this is where we get to play with the general setting and within the shape section is where you can change the emitter shape so right now the very first emitter and the second one which you have is set to point and we can choose to set these things to box so by simply setting this to box you can see what we have you notice that we have these emitting from every possible part you can play with the height depending on what you want you can also play with the width just to get things in perspective moving forward there is a circular section which has to do with how the emitter type or the emitter shape is going to look like and you can also go through and start having fun with it within the texture section is where you get to load a particle texture so by simply clicking on this button you can load a given particle texture and you can start seeing what we have if we select that and set something like this you can also see what we have going on there and we can add as much things as we want now I'm just simply going to go ahead and reset this back to what it looks like previously and if you're thinking about playing with animation speed or maybe you're thinking about how you can play with controlling this particular thing, you can do all of these things within the velocity. So going down to the velocity, if we set this to 10 and press the enter key, let's actually go ahead and delete the second one so that we can see. So I'm just going to click on remove and click this and position this one right here so that you guys can see what we're doing. So if we go over here to where we have the velocity, we can drop this velocity to let's say 5 and you can see the speed at which this is working and it looks totally low. Now we can also go in and increase this velocity by adding a couple of zeros behind this 5 and if we make that 500 and press the enter key, you'd notice that the velocity becomes even way more. So if you want to play with these things by simply using graph, of course you can also do that. You can also play with the initial velocity which might be about 10. So it starts slowly and then it progresses and gets even cooler. So this is for those who are thinking about making effects, particle effects and stuff like that. You will definitely find this one super easy. Now going all the way down, you can have fun playing all the velocity parameters that you want to do. And I guess the place where a lot of people will find fun is within the color. So within the color section, there is actually a ramp that you can use to do some stuff. So I can simply click on this particular one, double click and then select the color. And you can now see that we're having fun doing some stuff and I can actually go all the way and let's double click right here and make this a little bit darker and you can see what we're having. And I might simply just click this, move this all the way to the side, double click to create a brand new one. And then I can change the color to probably something like that so once i do this you notice everything is jumping go over to velocity set this back to 200 like we had before go over to the shape and set this back to a point and now you can start seeing that we have you know something that looks a little bit controllable that exists within the scene so by doing this you can now control how you want the color of your particle to be like with that if you go down to the size you can you know have fun playing with the size depending on what you want to create so if you like to play with the angle you can also choose to do that right here and with that if you go over to the flow map you can also choose to play with the flow map we can turn that on select the texture that we want and i can simply assign a given texture and let's increase the strength and you can see that now the particle starts following that flow map that we have. So we can add and change the texture type or change how we want the flow to look like. And you can also proceed to play with the motion type and also get some cool stuff 
happening for you so let's talk a bit about the motion so right here within the motion what i would like to show you guys with this very basic emitter that we have here is by default the motion type is set to none select this and go all the way notice that we have the sine and cosine so if i turn this on what we can do is we can choose to play with this so by default if you go in and let's say we set this to about 100 and press the enter key you would notice that our emitter starts moving left and right and automatically this now deals with the x coordinate or the x axis you can actually add an extra zero to make it a thousand and now you can see we have that wiggly effect and if we go over to the cosine we can choose to even make things a bit more crazy so let's divide this by two and simply make that 500 and you can now see what we're having so if you also like to have some sort of offset while this is working you can choose to do that as well because if we go over to the sign offset we can make this about 10 and it starts offsetting by 10 and if we also go over to the cosine and let's say we just simply make this about 50 and it starts offsetting by 50 so this way you can actually control how these things get to work now in most cases you may not be able to find any form of animation tool that exists for this particular app so this is like the best way for you to actually start animating things directly here so you just simply need to think about how you want things to travel within the x-axis and also within the y-axis which is the sine and the cosine respectively so with that said you can also proceed to also add the flow map and use the flow map to also drive some things so let's take a look at a couple of examples and you know talk about some of the other things that you guys need to know so with this example we can now see that we have four different emitter types that exist here and we can play these things individually and see what the result look like so if we hit on the particles and press the playback button you can see we have that if we play the energy ball you can see what we have with the energy ball and then there is the lighting and finally we have the ring and all together if we press the playback button we get to see everything coming together to create this beautiful effect now i do know a lot of you guys will be asking why is this not looking like what we are having here or why is the output looking totally different from what you have here and that is pretty simple it is because right over here we have a couple of nodes that control how things work so let's get a brand new scene so that I can explain some more. So with the brand new scene here, I'm just simply going to go ahead and add a brand new emitter. And with that, if we right click, we can go to the section where we have effect and we can choose to add a pixelating effect. So if we click, drag and click right here, drag, you would notice that we have some sort of pixelation happening. Now that might not really make sense until we start cranking this all the way up. So I'm just going to go through and make this six by six. All right. So let's go ahead and set this to six, press the playback button and you can start seeing that. And if we go in and set this to three and go right here and set this to three as well, you can start seeing that. So depending on what you would like to do, you can use the effects within the node section and drive whatever final output that you're looking for. So, you can also right click and even add some more cool stuff let's say for example you want to add some chromatic aberration yep you can so we can add that and go all the way and add something like this and right now you don't necessarily see anything happening but then if we go in and start increasing the strength you can now start getting that pretty cool chromatic aberration so there is a couple of cool presets that exist right here that you can use to do a lot of cool things and to actually learn more about these things if you go over to the sample files that exist these things would get you up to speed really really quick you can actually get started working with this super easy so for those who like to grab this you can go through and get the free version and currently the one which i'm using to actually demo this to you guys is the free demo version which you can get right here and i'm going to put a link in the description where you can go through and grab these ones and start working with it and for those who like to purchase this you can simply go over to steam where you will be able to grab this and actually you know get started with this one as well so this is more like it and you can take a look at some of the examples that exist right here and see how best this actually works and for those who are into 2d games and maybe you're into 2d visual effects you might definitely want to give the blast effect a go and of course we've already talked about some cool tools which you can use to make some very cool effects so sometime last week we did talk about how you can make cool effects with the effect texture maker and i'm also going to put a link in the description so just in case you want to take a look at that and see how that works that is a pretty cool one we also did talk about the pixel art which is also a free tool that you can grab and actually start making some very nice pixel particle system for your games and you can also proceed to export these things out as both sprites and also 
a couple of animations and yeah for those that are excited about this one there's gonna be a link in the description that can help you get started meanwhile for those who will be wondering how do you render this thing out right over here there is a render button and if you go through you can choose to render this depending on what you want so if i simply go through and select the frame size that i want and by the way you can crank this to about 1k and once you hit the render button you can render this as a sprite sheet an individual set of images or you can simply render a given frame and that's more like it i'd like to know what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace